Hello and welcome to a new episode of Fantasy Pitching, where today I will be pitching a sequel to the Matrix Trilogy. I am well aware of the upcoming Matrix 4 film, which is shrouded in mystery, apart from the fact that several of the cast members are returning, including Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss as Neo and Trinity. So shrouded in mystery is the movie that we don't know what kind of role these dead characters will have. Will they be avatars for a new batch of leads, used in a video game kind of way? Will they be NPC-like characters that the machines have set as programs, like the Architect or Oracle in some sort of homage to their contributions to creating peace between the warring worlds? Will they be treated like Final Fantasy summons or Bizarre Adventure stands, a false ghost? Or will they simply just be back from the dead without a whole lot of fanfare just because they don't want to spend too much time on it explaining why? Either way, it will be strange since they have both aged over 15 years since we last saw them and the dead don't age. So in my pitch none of the previous characters, particularly the dead ones, will have any real presence in the movie. I was a huge fan of the Matrix, including the Animatrix and the video games lore, but we all know that the franchise really went out with more of a whimper than a bang. But I like the idea of feeding off the energy of the Animatrix shorts, which were shorts exploring the different realities that previous unknown characters had to face, whether it was the machine war, life in the real world or suddenly being dragged into the escapades of Matrix related action. The movie starts with a young protagonist who's just left college, American college, so they're over 20, and is about to enter the workforce. They feel sick and pass out to wake up in the real world. Unlike the original Matrix, this has been organised by the machines, with a nice debriefing room. A human handler would explain to the lead what was going on, that the Earth they knew was a digital construct set by the machine overlords that use human heat as energy cells in order to continue functioning, since in the human-machine war, the humans scorch the sky to stop them from getting energy from solar power. The handler will show the lead through a series of videos what the Earth looks like to freed humans now, since the truce between machines have chilled out on their terminator mode, so there is a marked improvement in what the cities and societies look like since the days of Zion. However, it all looks still pretty crap for people, but better nonetheless. It is explained that the humans and machines formed a treaty after the sacrifice of Neo, and now in the 21st year, humans are automatically removed from the matrix like this and are given the option, similar to the red pill, blue pill option of the escape Neo, they can choose to stay in Wonderland, the Matrix, or they can choose to live in a free, difficult real world without repercussion from the machines. It is said that most end up picking the Matrix since people can simply fall back into the life that they knew, memory of the real world would be erased and it goes on like nothing has happened whereas a few would rather suffer the harsh reality but be free. The lead character rather unheroically chooses to stay in the Matrix, though their life is not perfect they would rather stay in the relatively comfortable life of which they are accustomed. Such a theory poses in the old philosophical question as to whether it would be better to live a life uninhabited in a fake reality where everything is perfect or lead a life in the real world where things would be naturally difficult. No harm no foul in choosing the option, the handler assures that the lead will be returned to the matrix with no memory of the last couple of hours. The lead wakes up back in their own bedroom, however their memories have not been erased. The lead is panicking as mind is struggling to get to grips with the fact that they are living in a simulated reality and they are more than aware of this. The lead tries to explain their concern to their parents, positing that they hope it was all some kind of dream. The line is interrupted by static, and now the electronic devices are no longer working. Within a couple of minutes, there's a knock at the door, and through the people we see two agents. 
The lead willingly rides along with the agents, mirroring a mix between the interrogation scene and the track removal scene in the car from the original Matrix. It becomes all too clear that the agents are planning to kill our hero since it goes against the programming and the treaties that there should be no humans within the Matrix with any knowledge of the two worlds. Suddenly a truck rams into the vehicle knocking it off the road and a shootout begins between the three classic sunglass wearing black clad Matrixes assaulting the convoy. They are able to kill one of the agents who was going to use the wreckage as a cover up to kill the lead and they retreat on foot through a chase scene through alleyways. The Matrixes, I'd probably workshop the name to be fair, explain that all the anomalies are to be executed an agreement that the real world humans conceded to, since they really were working from the back foot when it came to negotiations. This group of matrixes are one of the few sex cells that have found a way to stay in the matrix and hold no allegiance to their earthbound brethren and are simply agents of chaos, which try to create as much anarchy as they can. The Matrixes are briefly disgusted by the lead's wishes to have a normal life, but relax their stance when it becomes clear that this will never again be the case. This all plays on to the idea of forced identity, something that the Wachowskis have put a lot of stock in from their previous work. The idea that you are more of than what you have been told that you are, and you simply need to find a way to become your true self against all odds. In this case, our lead is drafted into a war that they have no stake or belief in. The lead begins their training in the ways of the Matrix, however, they are significantly disadvantaged, since as you may remember, Neo and Co were able to download their various skills directly into their brains at the press of a button from the other side. These rebels have no such opportunity, their skills are sloppy and unrefined, but what they lack in discipline, they make up for in terms of Matrix manipulation. As demonstrated by the anomalies of Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions, they are able to do the impossible, crawling on ceilings, running through walls, and even will small things into existence, i.e. guns that automatically can reload without having to manually reload or carry extra bullets. The Matrixes are unable to get their message across virally since the machines control the internet, so they get into their mind that they must cause as much devastation as possible, leaving physical clues in a bid to get people of the world to connect the dots. It's not a good plan, but it's their plan. The lead protagonist is not certain about this as it involves causing mass casualties to the innocents. The Matrix has then ordered the lead to kill their family to prove their dedication for the cause because simply typing certain phrases into a computer or a phone would be enough to give the machines their exact location and it's not as if these people are actually blood relatives anymore because the Matrix has never made it clear as to whether or not people do have familiar ties or they are just randomly put together pieces of DNA that grow into these little battery hens. At the lead's parents' house they do not go ahead with the order and instead attack the matrixes causing more chaos for the machines to get wind of and the site is flooded by agents. In the melee the family is killed but there are too many witnesses in the neighborhood to the point where the machine logic is to kill all who have seen this not before some of the destruction is shared on the internet. Because of the various leaks, the machines cut off world communication to stop the passing of information. The lead followers, the Matrixes, into the city, where they are using their veil of chaos to begin their plan, and the lead knows that the Matrixes are far too psychotic to leave them alone after they have executed this plan. Buildings begin to detonate, and dust and screams fill the streets. The lead shoots the leader of the Matrixes in the back of the head, but manages to will his skin strong enough for the bullet not to be able to penetrate his skin. He makes his way into a crowd, losing the lead. Before he executes the second part of the plan, he wills himself to be 20 feet tall and begins to pick random people up from the crowd, enough so that there are plenty of witnesses. He becomes very red and appears to be struggling, smiling all the while, as if he knew this would happen. His skin tears and his blood vessels burst as he falls dead, unable to control his physical state. 
this is again a nod to the Matrix anime roots from something like Akira. The remaining members of the Matrixes are battling with a handful of agents. Our lead carefully picks them off, surrendering to the agents, who then pause and begin to leave without the lead. When confronted, the agents say that they've been informed to return to base and await further instruction. Like communication returns as we hear similar terrorist attacks around the world, and the Matrix is seemingly temporarily abandoned of machine control while they assess the situation. So that is my Matrix movie pitch. It is bleak. Uh, there could be some Fight Club-like similarities drawn between the finale, but don't worry, it's not like it's ever going to happen. So do me a solid. If you think it sounds any good, leave a like. If you have your own ideas, leave a comment and subscribe for more in the future. See you in the next video.